Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska, Native news and Native information. I'm Jeannie Green, thank you for joining us. Today we travel from one end of this beautiful state to the other, beginning with Deborah Bow, who's on board again this week with her Coastal Villages Region Fund report, traveling to Quinnahawk, Alaska. Then we visit an event, happened recently, called Bridge Builders. I was there, it was a lot of fun. We're seeing how teamwork, people coming together, accomplishes much, plus having a wonderful time. And we also meet with Bethel's JROTC national champions who were brought in by the bridge builders just for this event. It's a fun show. I'll be back right after this. Heartbeat Alaska is number one. Heartbeat Alaska thanks the Denali Commission for making this program possible. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Coastal Villages Region Fund. Thank you, CVRF, for your support of Heartbeat Alaska. And... By the Nature Conservancy of Alaska. Working with Alaska's rural communities to conserve and protect our natural heritage. It's a pleasure to reintroduce Deborah Vo from Coastal Villages Region Fund. She works for them and also Heartbeat Alaska, letting us know what's happening in her area, which is Yupik country. Here's Deborah Vo with this report. Gwinnahawk, Alaska is a village of slightly more than 500 residents located at the mouth of the Kanihtuk River on Kuskokwim Bay. People of the region have subsisted on the rich salmon runs in the area's rivers for generations. Catching, preparing, and drying fish in the traditional way is still an important means of providing food for the village. But now, thanks to the efforts of Coastal Villages Seafoods, the salmon are providing even more than food for the village. They are providing a dependable way of earning money for the people of the area. Um, I've noticed that in 2000 we've placed close to uh, 250 individuals um, that have made uh, around 944,000 in wages. In 2001 uh, we've placed close to 389 individuals um, with wages of up to 1.5 million. It's common knowledge that a major challenge to village life is the lack of meaningful employment. There are very few jobs, and many of the jobs that do exist pay very little. Even in a subsistence lifestyle, money is necessary to survive. The processing plant at Winnehawk is providing dependable, well-paying jobs to many area residents and area fishermen as well. Coastal Village's goal is to further develop this and other plants that they operate to provide high quality seafood products for market and a sustainable employment base for area residents. This plant uh, has uh, last year I think something like 200 region residents worked here last year and as I said uh, a good portion of them came back come back this year to work a second year. Um, uh, there's a uh, excitement among the crew this year that's uh, really uh, quite uh, quite exciting to see and uh, you know that's sustained through the year and people come back again and again not only will there be a, uh, a better product but also you'll get uh, something that people can count on in terms of uh, a job during the summer that uh, is enjoyable people want to come back for and, uh, and people can make some good money at. And that's sort of what this is all about, providing job opportunities in a region. I 
Litnasong at refrigeration uh, building maintenance sa akin lo. Dahil wala lang matuwa ang training nga sa akin ang imo may Dutch Harbor. Assistant engineering nga akin lo. Two years. Dahil sa mga transfer nga lo sa liyak to lo. Sa lila mani. My second year, I got a job building maintenance. The labor pool, uh, the people who come to work here, uh, about a third of the workers at the plant are from the village of Quinnahawk, and about two thirds are from other villages, uh, either in the coastal villages region, including the largest group comes from Hooper Bay, which is also the largest village in the region, uh, and then other villages on the Yukon and up the Kuskokwim River. Uh, we try heavily to recruit within the region. Uh, people are, some people have been working here for three years now, and uh, there's been quite a group who have come back, uh, plus a, a newly recruited workers as well. In Mukhanan, I can Hanan down a plant at Chelly Walachta, the gum, you done my one dark and chilling. Asal ni cuma ni tu tsunami ikut bumi jali langsung terus main dan wani pilla. Alu lah tu langsung ikut bumi tsunami tsunami pun pilla sekat ni. In order to ensure an ample supply of willing and well-trained employees. Coastal Village Region Fund sponsors a variety of training programs and internships. Anyone interested in working in the seafood industry should contact CVRF for employment information. So where'd you get the two? The guy up at the corner store sold it to me. I'll let you try some, but just don't tell mom. Maybe just once. What would life look like if you could fast forward a few years? Here, try this. Back then, I didn't know better, but somebody should have. One out of two kids who smoke or chew before they turn 18 will die or suffer from a tobacco-related illness. Do the kids in your life a favor. Don't sell, buy, or give them tobacco. Are you traveling to Anchorage for education or health care? The Alaska Family Hospice is your home in the city. Located one and a half blocks from the Alaska Native Medical Center, Alaska Family Hospice offers fully equipped apartments, housekeeping services, shuttle service, Medicaid payments, grocery shopping service, or cook your own native food right in your apartment. Well, I've been coming here for the uh, last three years, and all the time I come here, we know, it's like a home away from home. For total comfort, affordability, and safety, Come on home to the Alaska Family Hospice, your home in the city. We are looking for candidates that are able to complete a full contract, a successful contract, a contract maybe up to four to five months, or can be on a trip-by-trip -trip basis. Some of the requirements are the person must be physically fit to able to perform his or her job. Um, the person must be able to work long hours. It, it is strenuous and a person must be able to lift heavy objects and to work in a wet and cold environment and be able to read and speak and understand English for safety precautions and such. And very importantly that a person be drug and alcohol free. Our training program involves bringing individuals in who have had some form of processing experience um, where they will learn more technical skills involved in the fishing industry, such as quality assurance, um, fillet production, and um, HACCP training. I 
Coastal Villages Seafoods uh, organized two training sessions this spring uh, conducted at Indian Valley International in India and just south of Anchorage. Uh, the first training program was for quality control, quality insurance. Uh, quality is the uh, requirement of the marketplace right now and want to make sure that the quality, the products that come out of Cusquin Bay are as uh, good or better than uh, any products uh, produced elsewhere in Alaska. The quality of the product at the Quinnahawk plant begins out in the Cusquin Bay where specially designed slush bags are filled with ice to keep the freshly caught fish cold. A skiff loaded with shave ice constantly moves from boat to boat, delivering the ice where it's needed. Local residents with harvest permits provide the fish for the plant. This is another way to boost the local economy. Although the prices vary from year to year, just having an outlet for their fish is a new source of revenue for local fishermen. However, just having a boat and a net doesn't guarantee catching lots of fish. So far, uh, things are a little slow here in uh, Bay. Uh Expected a little bit more early on in the season, uh, but we are, it's still early and we'll see how things uh, pan out. We'd expected a harvest of about a million and a half pounds um, so we're on our way towards that goal. Once caught and iced down, the fish are transported immediately from the receiving dock to the processing plant, where they are quickly processed, packaged, and frozen to assure the highest quality product and therefore receive the highest price possible. Even with a high quality product, there are still more problems that exist when administrating a project like this, so far from any road system. Well, there are a couple of challenges. Uh, the first challenge, of course, is uh, the market. Uh, the competition from farm fish has just changed the economics of the Alaska salmon industry so much that uh, the prices that you can get now for uh, salmon is just not what it used to be and and you're fighting that as you try to deal with the high operating costs out in a remote place like Quinnahawk uh, with a short airport and having to fly fish into Bethel and then into Anchorage it's very expensive uh, the community is having a new airport put in and maybe within two years when that's completed be able to fly fish directly to Anchorage and reduce the cost substantially so you have to do what you can. Uh, we're freezing some fish and we'll be uh, transporting that out by uh, boat uh, later in the summer. So that will reduce some costs and, and also trying to fly out some uh, fillets, uh, which also reduce the poundage going out. It's a, it's a very difficult process, and as well as just the logistics of flying 5,000 pounds out at a time and trying to get those all to the marketplace uh, in a good condition. Uh, weather's been extremely warm out in western Alaska this past week and uh, you have to fight that as well just because uh, if w fish get warm it's just not going to be uh, accepted. It's apparent that this project is helping the residents of the Kuskokwim Bay area and other coastal villages provide good paying jobs and a feeling of security that there will be employment from year to year season that an employee returns to the plant, there are opportunities for advancement within the company. It is this type of long-term planning for the future of our villages that will most assure their survival. I would just like to encourage those individuals um, from Coastal Villages member communities to take advantage of our, um, our foresight program. 
it's a great opportunity for individuals to um, gain work skills or enhance their education. From all indications, it looks like the Coastal Villages Seafoods plant is off to a great season. From beautiful Quinnahawk, Alaska, for Coastal Villages Region Fund and Heartbeat Alaska, I'm Deborah Vo. Each week, Heartbeat Alaska brings you great stories from all over the state. And we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. Say hi from Northland. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. This is a great state and a great nation with incredible diversity of life and cultures. These times of divisiveness between peoples test this greatness. Come be a part of history. The We the People March will be August 22nd in Anchorage. This year's theme, Alaska Tribes, the next 10,000 years. We need your energy. We need your funding. We need your help. Call 279-2511. That's 279-2511. And we'll see you at the march. Are you ready to party? How about a picnic? How about a potluck? Well, it all happened recently at the Bridge Builders event. Thank you. As you know, we're on Athabascan land. And traditionally in the native culture, when you hold an event on somebody else's land, it is proper protocol to ask permission to hold your event. So in that case, I'd like to introduce Malcolm Roberts, who is the president uh, of the board of directors for Bridge Builders. And he will make the official request of Dorothy Cook, who is the first chief of the village of Eklutna. And Dorothy? Could come forward, please. Dorothy Cook, first chief of the Klutna village, we respectfully request all of us representing close to 50 cultures, all of whom live now in the city of Anchorage, you who represent the people who first live here, and it's your ancestors and your tradition that hallow these grounds. And we ask you now for permission to holding this celebration on your land. Yes, you may. Thank you so much, Dorothy. It's wonderful to be here. Well, it brings all of these different groups together, which I think is critical for us as indigenous people here, because as it turns out, so many of the people who come up here don't even know who we are. This is part of bridge building, meeting with the other cultures and learning about each other. And I think we are probably the least known in some ways, which is kind of sad, you know. And this type of event helps us to uh, get over some of that, not just ignorance, but the, the stereotypes that develop because people don't know who they are at all. They certainly are so similar to what we grew up with. And I think as people began to hear their, the different music come together, they began to realize that we are a family. And so that's really part of Bridge Builders is to make sure people understand that. We are what? What you say now? We come on, are come on, come on. what? Bring it up now. We are what? One more time now. We are what? Let it we are
national champions, Bethel JROTC. They work together, they get up at 5 a.m. Um, their, their motto is refuse to lose. Can you relate? Aren't you proud of them? I mean, this is what uh, teamwork is all about. It's the best example of teamwork in the state. And here they are going national, winning the uh, national competition. Proud to be associated with them. We started with um, Mayor Maestrom a number of years ago. Um, there was actually a, a minister's exchange between a, a black minister and a Presbyterian, I think, white guy, and, and they changed pulpits. And then after that, they had a dinner and they talked with the mayor and Mrs. Maestrom and, and their own wives about why can't we do this more often and get people to get to know each other better. Um, that became, at the first Bridge Builders picnic, was um, 30 couples from 10 different cultures who all agreed to exchange a dinner event or some personal time with another couple they'd never met before of a different background. That's how it all started. Bridge Builders builds a community of friends among all the different cultural groups that live here in Anchorage. It's a grassroots approach to combating racism and prejudice with the idea that people can get an opportunity to know somebody from a different culture or ethnic group. You know, there's about 20 separate native cultures in Alaska, and there's about 40 more cultures that are imported. And we all have to learn how to work together, and Bridge Builders does that. They're great at doing that. Malcolm Roberts is an absolute saint for this state. I mean, he's a, he's a state resource. And I'm really, really am proud to be associated with the Bridge Builders. The catchphrase is to create a community of friends. Um, these folks have gone a step further than the classic sort of wholesale fighting racism. They're into talking with their neighbors. Well, one of the reasons we originally asked to come to, to the Alaska Native Heritage Center is he wanted to have the membership of Bridge Builders understand who the First Nations are in Alaska. And we felt this was the best place to bring them. Here are mock-ups of our original villages as they used to be. The landscape's been altered so that it fits the terrain that, that our old homes used to be in. We wanted to give them a real sense of our identity and that it's an identity that's alive and well today. It's really to inspire the young people to be uh, confident in who they are, to take pride in who they are, and for the other members to understand that we're a living heritage, not a museum. The history of the Tongan and Samoan people in the South Pacific has been an age-old story of conflict and war. Even those who immigrate in the United States often continue their um, hatred, their hostility. So what I did, I organized a new organization under the name of VIP, the Voices of Island People, include both Tongan and Samoan. And we proved it last week in the 4th of July to the world and also people of Alaska, no. There is no conflict between Tonga and Samoa here in Anchorage. We, we showed out to the, to the public that we came from one island, one family, and we, we united together. So today, I think the British Spirit invited us to sing that song, a combined choir, Tonga and Samoa, out there. I think the most significant thing that happened today was the fact that there was at least 500 people in attendance and uh, this made up uh, initially almost uh, 60 or 70 different cultures from around the world.
This event grew out of a small beginning seven years ago with a handful of people and uh, it has grown ever since. The whole idea of bridge builders is to uh, create understanding and uh, respect for one another's cultures. I think what makes bridge builders different is that so many of these people have run into each other over a period of years now. And there, there's a feeling of, of personal relationship. This group came together, starting uh, just with a few small, small groups of people around a dinner table, and has now grown into over a thousand people. And it's all self-sustaining. people together, no matter what language, what national, what, what customs and traditions, but we all one. So I believe that today, I'm so happy today that uh, I've seen all my Tonkin friends out there cooking, and when we're singing, we're going to share that song together and then dancing together with them, just to show that uh, we are one. We are brothers and sisters out here in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska Native news and native information Thank you everyone who contributed to this story So happy that Deborah Bow is back on board with her report Be looking for more from her And Malcolm Roberts and Cindy, thank you so much And Denali Commission for bringing incredible stories to our viewers of Heartbeat Alaska I'm Jeannie Green, until next week, God bless every single one of you And look for me again, won't you? Right here on Heartbeat Alaska Break it down, come to the